Hi, it's Will from StoneTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube, you know it's Epic Fantasy, and we're in the Wizard Sanctum, and my latest project is right there. It is a wizard's clock. It's actually a pendulum clock, which is kind of interesting. You ever wonder what makes the tick-tock sound in a clock, in a mechanical clock? It is something called the escapement, and I will show you that right here. This one is called a single pin escapement, and it's a very simple type of escapement. See that wheel? That's what makes the ticking sound, the tick-tock sound. And this um, clock also has a, um, a something I call a moon disc. And uh, see, there you go. As it moves, the moon, phases of the moon change. So a fun little project. All you need is some foam board and a few extra things. And I, of course, I give you the template. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and treasure chains, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach the art of real creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay. Um, in the description of this video down below is a link to the template. Print that template up, and it shows you everything you need and all the parts, and gives you just about everything you need to make this clock, including a blank disc. If, if you don't want to make a moon, you can make some kind of other symbols or something to go on there. So the first thing you do is you make the base of the clock, and it's pretty simple. There's just a few cuts like this. Three of the cuts are only part way through the foam, so you can fold it, and two of the cuts are um, completely through. So you fold it up like that and glue it together. And this is the whole basic structure that supports the whole clock system. That's, um, I think that's 12 inches wide, and I think it's, um, I'm not sure, the directions say it's uh, 20 inches tall. So then cut yourself out a, a hole for the weight, the string and weight that drives the whole thing. Now take part two and cut it out of foam board and glue it up there on the top and take part three and glue it here three inches from the bottom. Three inches from the top surface of the bottom. So now let's make the drive wheel. Parts four and five, glue them together, one on top of the other. Doesn't matter which one goes on top. And see those two X's though, those are important. Let's cut yourself a couple of pieces of dowel. This is quarter inch dowel. One piece is one and a quarter inches long. And one piece is five inches long. And then while we're at it, from your dowel, um, sharpen a long piece of dowel. This is a tool you'll use to help pierce holes in the project as you need them. See? So pierce those two holes. And they can be snug fits. You don't have to work them really hard. You want them to actually be a snug fit. Put the small pin in here like this on the outer hole. Clean up the excess glue. Turn it around like this and put the large pin in the center hole like this. So now the two pins are on opposite sides of that assembly. Clean up the extra glue. Make sure it's nice and strong because this is your drive wheel. You want both of those pins to be nice and strong. And then make it nice and straight. See how I'm looking at it and spinning it? You want to try to get it nice and straight so it spins cleanly and not um, wobbly. So now let's do the moon wheel. Uh, it's the name I call it. And to do the moon wheel well, cut it out of the template and then glue it down to foam board. And this way you can get a nice accurate cut on this because this is, might be the most difficult part of the whole thing. Although it's not difficult, it's just a bit tedious. And then go ahead and cut out all those teeth. And take your time. And take several passes. No need to cut through the foam board on the first pass. You can do multiple passes. But cut that wheel out. And notice it's two-sided now. The teeth definitely have an orientation here. So now parts 10 and uh, 9 and 10. Um, the part, that's part 10 there. Cut that out of foam board. And do here's a technique for, for tracing. Put the template on your foam board and press down with a blunted pencil. What happens is that causes an indent in the foam, in the foam board so that you can remove the template and see that indent and then trace it. So you've traced the part kind of quickly and easily. And part nine there in the template is a dowel that is six inches long. So go ahead and cut that dowel out too. So now use your tool to pierce that center hole. And now watch the orientation of the wheel. See how the teeth are aligned? They kind of point towards the right. Orient it that way and then put your 
part right on there and line it up cleanly so everything is nice and lined up and then flip that disc over so now the teeth are oriented pointing kind of leaning towards the left cut out your moon disc or your blank disc with the drawing you made on it you can put symbols on it whatever you want stars names numbers or whatever and uh, glue, and glue, glue stick that down So there you go, your moon wheel is done. Let's continue on. <clears throat> now measure up eight inches from here and do a line on both sides. And then take parts 12, 13, 14, and 15. 12, 13, 14, glue these here. 14, 16, 17 and 18. So that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Glue those on. Eight inches up from the bottom. Now draw a center line like this. The whole uh, height of your of your um, your box and then four inches from the bottom make a mark. Four inches from the top surface, make a mark. And then one inch from the top, along that center line, make a mark. And then pierce those holes with your piercing tool. And here's the thing. You want it to go straight through, keep it nice and straight, and pierce through those back pieces too. Uh, they were parts two and three. Pierce right through those and keep them nice and straight, side to side, and up and down. So now, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. The Oculus. I call this the Oculus. Trace those on the foam board, cut them out, and then apply them. Part 19, part 21. Part 20 and part 22. And now the Oculus itself, which is part 23, don't glue it on. Just use some masking tape to tape it on. The reason for this is we want to open it uh, multiple times when you're building it and when you're winding it up. So there you go. Very nice. Now you can insert your drive wheel down here. And it's going to be a nice, easy motion. So um, work it, work the pin in there, and um, you know, work it out really good so it's nice and smooth and easy. There's very little friction. And here's another pin in the, in the that's in your template. Cut that one and install it, and then put your moon wheel on it. I'm trying to think, I think that pin is six inches or eight inches. It, it says in the template. So now let's make the pendulum. Parts A, B, C, A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. You trace those out on foam board, and you can do it a couple of ways. You can trace it like we did with the other piece, or you can cut them out. Uh, um, excuse me. Now you have to cut these pieces out. I'll show you why. Cut all four pieces out, and don't forget that center section, and then tape them together to form your pendulum, like this. A, A and B, C, and D and make it nice and straight. Now this assembly comes out to be about 30 inches long which is one sheet of foam board. That's why we do it this way. And we're going to make this pendulum actually longer but let's start with this. 30 inches long parts A, B, C, and D. Put them on your foam board and trace it and don't forget to trace that center section and then cut it all out. There we go. Very nice. But let's check something. Check with a quarter inch dowel if your pin goes through that little space. That's very important. If it doesn't, open up that space a little bit with a sharp knife. So it passes cleanly through. There we go. That's perfect. 
You get a little leeway in this, but it has to pass through or your clock won't run. So now we're going to take a measurement, which makes this whole clock assembly um, work correctly. Measure from pin to pin on the drive wheel and drive wheel. The center pin and the center pin. Note down that measurement, whatever it may be. And then on your pendulum, from the center space, from there to the other, to the right, measure, mark down that measurement and then cut it out and then uh, pierce that hole with your, your piercing tool. Okay, so now let's finish the pendulum off. You got parts P1, P2, and P3. P1 and P2 are actually a single part. So trace out P1 like this on foam, on your foam board, right? But we're not cutting it out yet. It's going to be P1 and P2 make a single part. And then put P2, the template like this, match up the ends and trace P2. So now you have a long pendulum and the actual leaf down the bottom there, the ballooned out part, that's called the bob of the pendulum. So there you go, P1 and P2 are a single part. You're gonna cut that piece out and also do the same thing with P3, just trace it. So there you go, cut those pieces out and now glue P3 to the top of the pendulum like this, where you had put that hole, where you pierced that hole, about like that. It doesn't matter too much. This is, you can be about three quarters of an inch overlap, something like that. And then at the bottom of the pendulum, tape your P1, P2. Same thing, three quarters of an inch overlap is fine. Try to keep it straight. Mine is a little crooked, straighten it out there. There we go. Now your whole pendulum is done. Flip it over and tape a counterweight on the back of that bob. I use three AA batteries. And rather than do a pyramid stack like that, tape two or three batteries flat so they don't stick out because it may interfere with your counterweight, with your weight, with the swinging weight of the Glock. It may hit it. And I ended up doing that. So now let's put it together. Slide your pendulum into the clock like this. And get it mounted on that drive shaft where the moon clock is, where the moon gear is. And check everything. You want everything to be smooth. So you have to work those holes a little bit. It's a little tight in different holes. But there you go. Very nice. See, here's the kind of weight that I made um, to slim it down some. That's eight AA batteries. Tape it together with a wire at the top so you can hook it up. But I started with this and then make yourself a, cut yourself a piece of string about six feet long and put a hoop in the end of it like that. That way you can connect it to your weight. And see this battery pack? It was um, rubbing against a pendulum so because it's so bulky. That's why I went with that other one that's thinner, longer but thinner. So take the other end of the string and tie it to your drive shaft and put a piece of tape on it so it doesn't slip. And then this is the trickiest part of the whole thing. You're going to have to tinker with this. But this little wire here, and what it does is, I'll show you, it pushes the gear and then releases the gear. So you'll see once you start running it how to tweak that. But you can start with a piece of wire that's bent and then um, tweak it as you need it. But it just barely catches the tops of those teeth. And you can always trim down some of the teeth if they're too big. Right? This is going to take a little bit of tweaking for the moon wheel to work correctly. So that's it. Your moon clock is your... Pendulum moon clock is done, paint it. And I recommend don't paint the pendulum like I'm doing here because the paint will tend to curve it. If you do paint it, paint it lightly and paint both sides. You have to paint the back and the front. Uh, it will, the curves will um, negate themselves. It'll curve one way and the other way and end up being straight. Uh, thanks for watching. Let's take one last look at it working.
There you go. Um, the pendulum clock was invented by Galileo and Christian Huygens, but he didn't make one. Christian Huygens in 1656 made the first one. This particular pin um, was invented by a gentleman by, named um, Charles McDowell in 1851, the single pin escape pin. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.